Um, so it turns out that beside knowing complex numbers, it's also really important to know statistics before we start discussing the deep parts of quantum mechanics. Um, so basically, this video parts will discuss um, some introductory statistics, and we'll begin with the concept of probability. So probability is simply a statistical tool that we use to quantify chance, or we, we, we use it to assign some numbers to chance, right? We're also used to seeing chances in real life. Um, if you don't go to school, the chances are that you won't be successful in life. Um, if you don't drink your milk, chances are you might develop osteoporosis after you're 35. So the word chance itself is not very useful because it doesn't really give us a sense of how much. It only gives us a sense of what is there. It doesn't tell us anything about how much. So mathematically, we're interested in defining things based on how much there is something, right? I want to know what's the What's the probability of me being unsuccessful in life if I don't go to school? Is it 10%, 20%, 80%, 90%? I mean, if I just say the chances are high, that's really not useful. Um, so probabilities were introduced to give some numerical values to this phenomena of luck or chance. So simply put, probability is defined by your desired outcome divided by the total number of possible outcomes, right? Um, if you toss a coin, then there's two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Um, and let's say I'm interested in finding out what's the chance that I'll, I'll, I'll land on a head. Maybe you have to flip a coin for your life. So what you do is the outcome that you desire is heads. That's one outcome. The total number of outcomes is two. So the probability of you landing a head or the chance of you landing a head is 50% or 0.5. So whenever we solve any type of probability problem, we tend to do it in three steps. So the first step is you have to assign a numerical value for any event J. What I mean by that is you have to give an, uh, some event that you're interested in, you have to convert it to the language of math, meaning that you have to assign it some mathematical value. Usually we do this in terms of binary values. We assign two values, either zero or one, okay? So usually events that we are interested in, we give them a value of one. So if I roll or if I, if I toss a coin, then the two possible outcomes are heads or tails, right? So heads gets a binary value of one and tails gets a binary value of one. However, every other value like half a head, half a tail or bananas, something that's irrelevant, those we give values of zero. Um, so that helps us get a probability of zero. We'll talk about that in a second. So the first step is always to assign a numerical value for any event j. Um, j is just some general way of defining an event. So let's do an example. If I toss a coin, we have two possible outcomes. We can either land on a head or a tail. So remember, we have to use binary numbers to classify these and give them some values. So I'm going to assign the number one to either heads or tails being the outcome. Um, now let's do another example. If I roll a die, um, die is a single form of dice. So if I roll a die with six sides, we have six possible outcomes. So the total number of outcomes is six. We can we can land on a one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? Um, well, the, the thing we have to do is we have to assign some binary value to each individual outcome. We have to convert them to the language of mathematics. So the outcome could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So the total outcomes are 6. But each individual event or each individual outcome needs to be translated to the language of math. So we do that by assigning all of them values of 1. Right? So this is what's going on here. Now, the second step is to find the total possible outcomes. So if you toss a coin, then the two possible outcomes are heads or tails, right? So that's the two possible outcomes. The key word is the total possible outcomes rely on heads or tails. So you need to know this, that in mathematics, 
or means addition, and and means multiplying two quantities. So the outcomes are heads or tails. Remember, or means addition. So the total number of outcomes is one plus one or two. Um, if you roll a die, then the number of possible outcomes are six from one to six. Um, so you can have a one or a two or a three or a four or a five or a six. Um, those ors get converted to plus signs. Um, so the total number of outcomes is six. Then the third step is probably the easiest step, and that's solve the problem that you're interested in. So if you toss a coin, this is an example. What is the probability of getting heads? Okay, remember, probability is the desired outcome j divided by the total possible outcomes. So here, my desired outcome is to land a head. And the total possible outcomes is 2. I can get heads or tails, right? So here, mathematically, I represent heads by assigning it a value of 1. Um, and the total number of outcomes is 2, so the probability is 0 0.5, and if you convert that to a percentage, you multiply it by 100, and you get 50%. So there's a 50-50 chance that you'll get heads, or you might even get tails. Now let's do another probability example. What's the probability of rolling either 1, 3, or 6? So the desired outcome divided by the total possible outcomes gives me probability. Now our desired outcome is I want 1 or 3 or 6. Okay, so those ors get converted to plus signs. So I got 1 plus 1 plus 1 divided by the total number of outcomes, which is 6. Um, so the answer comes out to be 3 over 6 or 1 or half, which is 50% or 0 0.5 um, if you leave that in decimal form. Okay. So far, probability is not that hard. Um, we, can, we can formally represent probability as this. So probability associated with any event j. So j is just some general way of writing an event. So any outcome or event j, the probability associated with it is nj divided by n, meaning the desired event with an outcome j divided by the total possible outcomes n. I put that the limit n approaches infinity because you can have, in certain cases, an infinite number of possible outcomes, right? Um, so the, the point is, is that n could be a very, very large number as well. Um, now another thing to note is that we assign 1 for a desired event, and for all other irrelevant events, we assign the value of 0. Right? So this is the binary coding system we use um, in probabilities. So that, that means that the probability is between 0 and 1, right? When probability is 0, then the event is said to be impossible. The probability when it's equal to 1, then it's said the event is certain. It's going to happen for sure. So for example, what's the probability that if you throw a coin, you get heads, um, or you get half a head. Well, I have head and tail, I assign them values of 1 each, but half a head, 2 times heads, those, those random values which are irrelevant to our problem, um, we assign them values of 0, right? So the probability of landing a head is just 0 over 2 or 0. So that event is impossible to happen. What's the probability that in the next two seconds you're going to grow wings and start flying? Probably 0. Um, what's the probability that in the next five minutes you'll take one breath if you want to stay alive? That's probably 100%. So probabilities run from 0 to 1. They're never negative numbers, and they're never over 100%. If something is certain, um, you can't be... You can't be 102% um, sure that some event's going to happen. That's just ir uh, redundant. So the important thing is from this we get something called a normalization condition. And that means that if you add up all the probabilities associated with individual events, you should get a total probability of 100%. What's the probability that you are going to roll a heads or a tail um, sorry, what's the probability that you'll land on a head or a tail if you flip a coin? Well, the probability of landing a head is 1 over 2, and um, the probability of landing a tails 
is also 1 over 2 so the total probability is just 1 right so if you so what's the probability probability of landing a heads or a tail well remember or means plus the probability of landing a head is 0 0.5 and the probability of landing a tail is 0 0.5 um, so the total is 1 so the so I mean all this formula is telling you is is if you add up each of the probabilities associated with each outcome J then you should get an answer of 1 okay or meaning a hundred percent chance so moving on from that let's do some practice problems so a six-sided die is rolled what is the probability that we observe an even number so if I roll a six-sided die I can get each of these possible outcomes I can have an outcome from 1 to 6 I sign all of them binary values of 1 so if I roll a 1 I say that that event has a value of 1 associated with it if I roll a 2 it also has a value of 1 associated if I roll a 3 same 1 4 also corresponds to 1 5 as well and 6 as well so the total possible um, outcomes is simply 6. You add up all of the individual outcomes and you get a total outcome of 6. Now the question asking us, what is the probability that we observe an even number? So the even numbers here are indeed 2, 4, and 6. An even number is divisible by 2. Okay, so all of these are divisible by 2 and therefore it's an even number. Um, so remember, probability is desired outcome divided by total number of outcomes. Total number of outcomes here is 6. Our desired outcome is that we want to roll an even number. That means I want a 2 or a 4 or a 6. Remember, or means adding up in the language of math. If I roll a 2, that, that corresponds to a numerical value of 1 remember in mathematical language if I roll a 1 or I mean a 4 that also corresponds to a binary value of 1 and so does 6 the total number of events are 6 so the probability for this is 3 over 6 or 0 0.5 or 50 percent right because you can convert decimals to percentages by multiplying them with a with a hundred percent second question two coins are tossed what is the probability of getting exactly two heads so we are looking for a probability that the first coin gives a head and second coin also gives head so the probability of the first coin giving a head is basically 1 over 2. The probability of the second coin um, flipping over to give you heads is 1 over 2. And mathematically means multiply, right? So the probability um, if you roll two coins or if you toss two coins, the probability of getting exactly two heads is therefore 1 over 4 or 0 0.25 which corresponds to 25 percent. Okay, the last problem is which of these is not a probability? So the keyword here is not. Um, well, first let's see which ones are a probability. This decimal over here, if I multiply it with 100%, um, it turns out to be 0.123%. That's a really small probability, but it is a probability. This is probably the chance of you winning a dollar in a lottery, okay? Now, this number over here, it's over 1. So we'll come back to that actually in a second. Um, next, 1 if I multiply that with 100%, that corresponds to a 100% probability. That's also okay. This one is also okay. Zero, if I multiply that with 100%, I just get 0% as an answer. That's also a probability. That just means that the event is impossible. 15% um, also corresponds to some probability. So the question is asking, what of these is not a probability? Well, I know for a fact that B, D, E, and F are probabilities. Now, let's move on to A. A corresponds to a negative number. That's not a probability. You can't have 
probabilities that are negative numbers. The lowest probability you can have is 0%. That means the event is not going to happen. So there's no point in introducing negative numbers. The way that probabilities are set up, um, they can't be a negative number and can't be over 100%. So A is not the right answer. Now C, if I multiply C with 100%, I'm left with a probability of 103.31%. That doesn't make sense. The maximum probability you can have um, is 100%. So C is also not right. Um, so which of these is not a probability? Well, A and C are not probabilities. Okay, um, everyone else is a probability.